Hi guys, and welcome to the video. Today I wanted to talk about why the DID community is pretty toxic. Or not pretty toxic, but kind of toxic. I have some ideas about that and I want to explain. I don't need any caffeine today. So, over the course of the DID community's existence on YouTube, there has been a lot of drama. Now, a lot of the big DID creators that were very prevalent back in the day, like Multiplicity in Me, The Entropy System, Dissociated, a lot of them either quit or quit for a time or were canceled or something like that. And I wanted to talk about also a lot of the interpersonal conflicts that have taken place because between DID systems here on YouTube, there has been so much interpersonal conflict between different YouTube channels. I'm not here to necessarily talk about that conflict and like n not here to spill any tea, but mainly just here to talk about why it's there and why it seems to differ from many other communities and how much discourse between people that they have. It's pretty simple. People with DID have a shit ton of trauma and people who have DID also have PTSD and PTSD happens whenever you go through trauma. Basically, humans go through this cycle where they're doing normal and then a threat happens and then they either go into hyper arousal, which is, you know, heightened heartbeat, adrenaline, you know, maybe anger or distress, you know, or just anxiousness or hypo arousal, which is dissociation numbing, that kind of thing, sort of freeze response. Whenever you are forced to go through that cycle enough or to great intensity, eventually your brain just sort of stays in a constant state of hypo or hyper arousal. Or you interpret a bunch of different things as threats that don't have to be that threatening. This doesn't just pertain to the creators of DID channels, but also the community of people who watch DID channels because the community of people who watch DID channels usually either have DID or have a bunch of trauma and have like some other disorder. So whenever DID creators create content, if they say something that is off, in most communities it would just be like, hey that thing you said was off, somebody apologizes, people oftentimes depending on how off it was will forgive them. But whenever somebody in the DID community does something that's off, oftentimes people who watch the videos will think and go into that hypo or hyper aroused state and interpret it as more threatening than it has to be. And that's not invalidating the feelings of people who do that. I don't want to be like Nan's whole response to the thing that happened with the drawings where he was just like, Guys, I know your amygdalas are like firing off right now, like completely invalidating everyone's concerns. And again, people and DID creators do have done some shitty things that do require very in-depth criticism, but a lot of the things they get a lot of criticism for frankly don't deserve that much criticism. And I might state some unpopular opinions in this video. I don't know though, I was, I'm not like super well versed on the trauma, I mean the drama. I didn't really get like super in deep into it because I don't know, stuff just gets boring after a while. Sorry if you can hear, I got a new hamster by the way, I'll, I'll show you him, I promise. Um. What the fuck was I talking about? Anyways, people with DID, things that happen are more extreme and the responses to it are more extreme because people with trauma's reactions are often just in general more extreme. If somebody does something that somebody doesn't like, it's often interpreted as a threat because everybody has severe trauma and they're just trying to exist and they often feel threatened a lot. So it will be like, Oh my god, this thing you said is absolutely horrible. This is dangerous. This is awful. And um, it is, but, but it's a little hyperbolic. 
which with the popularization of cancel culture or whatever, um, I have sort of an in-between on whether cancel culture exists and, oh my god, we need to get rid of cancel culture, it's so bad. Like, there needs to be accountability and maybe even sometimes a little bit of social shunning because sociologically that's just a tool that is used whenever somebody does something wrong and it's like hey avoid this guy you know but with the popularization of cancel culture's extreme reactions to things i think it has become more appropriate in the DID community, in addition to the hyper arousal, to have more extreme reactions to it. I wanted to talk specifically about dissociated for a second because people hate dissociated. You've ever seen their subreddit? It's crazy. I, like a lot of people, learned a lot about DID from dissociated's videos. And then the whole thing happened where, you know, there was competition with dissociated. She, and then at the time, took, uh, took Multiplicity and Me's spot on the infamous Anthony Padilla interview or whatever, and there was conflict between so many YouTube sy systems and people were digging up a bunch of stuff that Dissociated did. And can we just talk about the fake claiming allegations against Dissociated? And I'm going to be very blunt with you how stupid they were. They are so fucking stupid. Oh my god. Like, the basis of the fake claiming allegations were that they stole their and their system setup from a very obscure weird ass book about traumatizing children essentially that i don't even know how to describe the book but it's basically about traumatizing children in a way that programs their systems a certain way and, like, I don't know how popular this book was, but I can't imagine, like, a teenager in 2014 finding this book somewhere and being like, oh, yeah, let's base my entire career off of this. And the evidence in the book was just so, like, not good enough to warrant that being even spoken of. A lot of it was alter names, like, crystals, alters named after crystals, Omega being SUI programming and Dissociated's Alter Omega was formed after an attempt or whatever. I just want to say, like, certain symbolism is just sort of universal in the human brain. One of the points was that in the book they talked about having a carousel in the inner world, and Dissociated had a carousel. And I want to just say that in people's brains, carousels sort of universally represent childhood innocence, you know what I mean? And names sort of universally have a sort of connotation to them, like, Fred sounds like the kid that pees in the ball pit, just inevitably. That's what Fred sounds like. So your subconscious often creates names that sound like who the altar is because it makes sense, right? In your subconscious. Your aloof ghost altar being called Omega in your subconscious makes sense. I didn't want to go on a whole rampage about the dissociated thing. Um, I know, okay, one more point. One of the points about dissociated faking was that they were very interested in DID in the beginning and they were inquiring about systems, dungeons and tunnels and dark parts of the world. And I just want to say, like, when you discover you have DID, of course you're going to find it fucking interesting. There's a fucking system of people in your head and a whole world. Is that not interesting? Do you not want to ask about other people's experiences, not commenting on whether it was invasive or not? But just don't you have that curiosity of wanting to know that you're not alone in certain things? Anyways, enough about that. People still rag on Dissociated for every single thing that they did. And they did some things that were not good. And they have apologized profusely. And the people are still mad at them. And that's okay. However, the anger has become just continuous harassment. And it just... It doesn't anger me as much as it just doesn't make any sense. Like, why do people hate them so much? Like, I feel like they've come back and deemed themselves very valid and having very good intentions and very sorry. But it's like people just can't see that and it's very weird to me. And I can only assume it's because the people who don't like Dissociated are other people with DID who are kind of gatekeeping 
or are angry or other people with trauma who have like BPD and CPTSD and that kind of thing. They feel threatened. So yeah, basically the gist is when people with DID in the community get in a kerfuffle, it's often more extreme than it has to be because everybody's traumatized. So they're being more aggressive and they're interpreting more things as aggressive than other people might not interpret as as aggressive. Anyways, that's my point. So I'm going to ramble about some other shit. I'm going to ramble about the whole dissociated fake claiming situation right now because that's what my brain wants to talk about. Another point they mentioned was that um, the person who supposedly diagnosed them doesn't have the ability to diagnose DID, but they can only give like referrals or something like that. And I want to say that, number one, self-diagnosis is valid in my opinion. I have been to see a couple psychologists and many therapists and I have been informally diagnosed with all kinds of shit. I want to make a whole video about it, but everybody had a different opinion on what they thought I had. Some psychologists didn't think I had DID. They just thought I was really autistic and I just made it up with my autistic brain. And some psychologists thought that I had DID and CPTSD, but my autism was just sort of a figment of my CPTSD. And yes, psychologists and psychiatrists and people like that did go through schooling to learn about these mental disorders, but oftentimes they went through schooling way back then and information is way different now. And also, you forget shit. You have to know so much shit when you're in that job and you forget stuff a lot. And whenever you look at medical literature, which I mentioned in the last video, you often see the most sensationalized cases of DID because doctors and stuff that are writing about DID are really interested in it, so they're more apt to talk about the more extreme cases where, again, alters will black out for weeks and all the alters will hate each other and, you know, children will come out in sessions crying and that kind of thing. And the more extreme presentations of DID. So psychologists might read about that and think, oh, this is DID in schooling. And then whenever they begin to assess people for, with DID, um, they think, oh, this, this can't be DID. They don't black out or this can't be DID because their alters can talk to each other. That is one reason a former psychologist who I do need to make a video about that evaluation said that I couldn't have DID is because my alters could communicate with each other. She thought people with DID couldn't have alter communication. Psychologists know stuff, but oftentimes they're just kind of people with opinions. And also I want to say that this, it might be a little controversial too, but I think all the shit you can learn in school about DID is readily available on the internet. Like you can learn all the same shit on the internet pretty easily. <laughs> so if you are doing your research you will be able to, you can self-diagnose. A lot of people, psychometric testing isn't covered by insurance. So it can cost thousands of dollars to get a stupid piece of paper of some dickwad saying that you have DID. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to call psychologists dickwads. They didn't do anything wrong. Just so that you can feel like you're valid in the community. Um, what am I gonna fucking say? And people with medical knowledge, that's only half the equation because they know medical knowledge, but you know yourself. You are the only person who can fully experience what you're going through. And so if you're the only person who can do that, if you're the only person who can know yourself, and you also have access to all the things psychologists know, yes, there are more intricate tests like... Um, certain questionnaires or certain, you know, more elaborate testing that they can do that you don't have access to, but I think that it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. If you know yourself and you're doing a shit ton of research, yes, you can self-diagnose because there's no point in being like, oh, I got these people in my head and I black out and they say a bunch of stuff to me and there's persecutors that are giving me nightmares and being like, well, but I can't say I have DID though because I don't have a diagnosis guess I'll just, I guess I just don't have it, which I think is probably what a lot of people do because people with DID like to convince themselves they don't have DID. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> this is reminding me that I have a lot of videos to make and I am saying too much now to the point where I need to not say so much so that I can actually make those videos. But um, 
Yeah, I will see you later. I really like filming on this channel. I want to do it more. I'll see you all next time.